Okay, so let's create a new folder. Let's call it um, PG Promise JS app. So what we are going to try to do in this video is connect to a database, a Postgres database from a JavaScript web app. And to do that, we're gonna need to use Node, Express, Postgres, and um, PG Promise, which is a library, um, a JavaScript library to connect to a Postgres database. Okay, so let's go ahead and just MPN initialize inside of the folder just to get it started. I should have done the dash Y. Okay, just to get the package.json. So now let's open up in Visual Studio Code. Let's drag it over. Okay. So now we have an empty project, no dependencies, nothing yet. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and add the app.js folder, which will be the entry point to the app. And while I'm thinking about it, um, go ahead and change the startup file to app.js. Um, and let's install the dependencies. So M npm install. Let's do nodemon to take my make my life easy. Nodemon pg promise and express. Okay. Okay, so while these are downloading, I don't have a database for you guys to connect to, but on this website postgresqltutorial.com, it is a fantastic uh, learning website if you're trying to understand databases and how to connect to them and they offer a sample database so that is what we're going to be using and connecting to in this web or in this demo so you just go here you download the DVD rental sample and then from psql, which is the terminal command for Postgres databases, um, you run a pg restore um, into a local um, Postgres database. So that's what I did. The file is here, and all I did was restore it into the database on my computer. So we are going to connect to that. Okay, give me just one sec. Okay, here we are. So now we have the dependencies installed. Let's go ahead and add the start script for Nodemon. So Nodemon, and then tell it to open app.js. Okay, let's save that. Okay, let's go ahead and add the two other folders we're gonna need. So we're gonna need a database folder, which will house a file called index index dot javascript which will house the connection to the postgres database so instead of having to specify the connection parameters each time you make a query you can just localize everything into one file and then reference that file the database configuration file in whatever other routes or whatever other files you need to connect to the database so Let's do exactly that. So first we will de declare the dependencies require PG promise. And for PG promise, there are initialization options that you can add in or you can just leave them blank. For this tutorial, we are just gonna leave them blank, but remember to add in the empty function when you are working with PG promise or else it will give you an error and it won't work. So bring in PG promise and then let's go ahead and declare the connection string to the database. So let's go ahead and bring this to another line. Okay, so there are essentially three parts to a connection string. So the first part is 
declaring the type of database, the protocol, I guess. So the second part is the username and the password for the connection to authenticate uh, your connection to the database. In this case, I'm just using a general password as my password. So, but yours will be different how you, depending on how you have it set up. And then the third part is the connection or where the server is running. And in this, for just simplicity's sake, we are connecting to a local host on my computer. And then the last part is the name of the database, which in this case is DVD rental, which is just that, that sample database from the PostgreSQL tutorial website. Okay. And then we can declare the database equals PGP, and then we'll pass it the connection string variable. And then we will export the database so that it can be used by uh, other routes and other uh, files that need to connect to the database. Okay. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and get our app.js started. So let's first declare the express dependency. Require express. And then we can declare a port number, which we want it to listen on, which we will just say uh, 3000. Um, we have to initialize the express app by just making it an instance of the variable. And then let's add the database connection that we just had. So it will be require, um, I think it's dot slash db, yes. So now that we referenced the index.js file, it will use these connection parameters each time. Okay. So just so we can get the um, app started, the last thing we need is to declare a tell it where to listen. So we'll pass it the port number that we declared and then a empty function to get it initialized, which will just, oh, which will just log where the app's running. Console.log. And remember to use back ticks, which are above the tab key, if you're gonna use string literals, which we are. So server running at HTTP, local host, colon, port. Okay, so let's save all of that. Okay, and so we can get the response from the database back in a JSON object. Let's do app.use express.json and then initialize that. Save that. Okay. Okay. So here we are. This is PG admin, which is the dashboard for. Uh, managing Postgres databases. So we're in the DVD rental sample database, and this is all the sample data and everything in it. There's 15 tables, actor, address, category. Um, so to just give you a little idea of the information that we're gonna try to pull out in our JavaScript app, just to show the connection to the database, we can do something like, let's say select, first name and last name from the customer table. And then this, let's run it. So these are all the sample people in the database. And this is hopefully what we will get in return from our JavaScript app. This is the information we are after. So let's go back to the app. 
So we have our connection to the database. We have, um, we've declared express and got it started. So let's add the routes folder now to connect to, or to declare the route that will connect to that database and pull that information. So routes, and then let's add, let's just say customer dot js okay so let's declare the the dependencies in here const express equals require express okay and since this is a route we have to declare the router so it's just const express dot router Okay, and since we also need to connect to the database, we're going to do require um, I think dot dot. There it is, since it's one more folder in. Okay, so now this is the method to actually connect to the database and send it a get request for the information. So we're gonna do router dot get and we'll target just the root, but we'll declare the route in the app.js folder in just a moment. And then the callback function will take a request and response. And then an arrow function. Okay. So this is where we actually query the database. So we do db.any. And then we write our query. So we'll do select first name last name from customer okay and then we do dot then and then all of the rows so db dot any the method is for when you are returning any number of rows. You don't necessarily know how big the, or how many rows or how big the object that you're gonna get back is. So db.any is kind of a, a catch all for just when you're not sure. So we're gonna do declare the rows, then an arrow function, and then we will console.log the rows just so we can see them in the ter terminal and then we will declare the response object to return us a json object of the rows okay and then we'll do some minor error checking just to make sure the query was successful okay and then we will export the router, which we can then use in the app.js file. So let's now declare the router. So we'll do customers router equals require and then we'll do the path to that file. So routes customer. Okay. And then we'll do app.use, which is another like catch all function for just telling the app to do something. And then we will pass it the customer's router or the customer route and then the customer router. Okay, so let's go ahead and save all of that. And that if everything went as it should, we should see some data pulled from the database in the app. Okay, so the server's running at localhost, control click. Okay, cannot get, that is good. That means that we are connected to the server, but because we didn't declare anything for just this um, home page, uh, there's nothing there. But that means that we're connected. So let's go ahead and go to the customers page. And there it is. So we successfully
queried the database and pulled out the first names and last names of all the customers from a JavaScript web app using um, Node.js, Express.js, uh, and the PG Promise library. So w what you do with this data could be a, a whole bunch of different things. You could display it. Um, you can send it into the database. There's a whole range of things you can do. But at this point, that is out of the scope of this video. So I'm going to go ahead and end it here. And I hope that you guys found this useful and that it saved uh, someone some learning time because it took me a while to figure out how to actually connect to a database, query it, and return info from a web application. So I'll see you guys next time.